Good morning. What's up? This is Dr. Slice with another paper one work example. All right, settle down, settle down. This one says a snooker ball of mass 200 grams hits the cushion of a snooker table at right angles with a speed of 14 meters per second. The ball rebounds with half its initial speed. The ball is in contact with the cushion for 0 0.60 seconds. You can see that diagram there, but it's also diagrammed up on the chalkboard. Let's jump over to the chalkboard. So we've got ball with mass 200 grams traveling at 14 meters per second. It's going to run into the cushion in contact for 0.6 seconds. So we call that T for time. And we're solving for the average force delivered. It's perhaps a chance now to talk a little bit about uh, Newton's third law, which says that forces exist in pairs equal in magnitude opposite in direction. So the two objects, the ball and the cushion that are interacting, are going to be in contact for the same amount of time. The forces they exert are sort of equal in opposite direction. We're solving for that force, either the force of the ball on the cushion or the cushion on the ball. And we need to remind ourselves that force is the rate of change of momentum. So here we obviously have a ball that's changing its momentum because it's both slowed down but also sort of traveling in the opposite direction. Uh, take note of the sign convention. Uh, this velocity vector opposes this one, right? So you're going to want to make sort of maybe this one negative relative to the other one, or sort of choose which direction is going to be positive, which one's going to be negative. All right, so let's expand this. The change, let's let's sort of use the full expansion. So the change in momentum is the final momentum minus the initial momentum. So change is always final minus initial. Now the time we can just sort of substitute. You know, it's 0.6 seconds. In other words. Um, it began contacting at time zero and it had been in contact for this amount of time. Uh, so we'll just call that T for time and we'll make that substitution. So momentum is mass times velocity. So mass times the final velocity minus mass times the initial velocity. Here we could find that factoring out the constant mass, we derive at an expression like this, U minus U over T, and that's acceleration. So this is really where you know, you might have begun saying, well, force is mass times acceleration, and you can just sort of calculate the acceleration here. Again, keeping track of sort of the, the negative sign for one of those velocity vectors. Um, since I set it up kind of like this, it's a force problem. This is the way we define force, the rate of change of momentum. I'm going to kind of, you know, think about it like this. I'm not going to, you know, factor out the mass. I'll just sort of keep it together. In other words, I want to value for what is the final momentum? What is the initial momentum? So I'm gonna kind of substitute it to this, you know, equation, uh, this one right here, not the yeah, MA. All right, so the mass, we have it in grams, but we want it in Newtons. And so we know that a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So we're gonna convert that 200 grams into kilograms. And so we've got the mass uh, 0.2 kilograms times the final velocity is gonna be negative seven. So I'm going to assign left as negative, right? So that's negative seven meters per second. So negative seven meters per second. This is going to be a quantity of kilogram meters per second of momentum minus the 0.2 kilograms. So it didn't change its mass. That's why we're allowed to sort of factor it out here if we wanted to times positive 14 meters per second. So here I've got the delta P sort of the numerator right here. And that's all happening over 0 0.60 seconds of time. So the units are going to be kilogram meters per second per second, or kilogram meters per second squared, which are newtons of force. I like to walk over here to do my mental math. Let's see. Actually, I'll do my mental math right over here. 0.2 times 7. Well, that's going to be 1.4, of course. To calculate. Uh, keep it like this. That's good. 1.4 kilogram meters per second minus it's negative 1.4, right? So negative 1.4 minus uh, 2.8 kilogram meters per second momentum over 0. 0.6 negative seven. zero. Six zero seconds. So we have negative one point four 
minus 2.8 to negative 4.2. So that's the change in momentum, negative 4.2 kilogram meters per second. So this numerator right here over the change in time, which is 0 0.6 seconds. And again, a kilogram meter per second squared is going to give us our newtons of force. So the negative sign is just sort of saying, well, if we've assigned the direction right as positive, obviously the force delivered to change its direction is in this direction, the direction that we assign negative. So this negative sign is sort of reminding us that the force is acting to the left. And so you get negative seven newtons for that. Considering, again, our answer choices here, choice B seems pretty good. This has been another work example with Dr. Schleich, still living the physics life. We'll see you next time.